When I was in sixth grade, I decided to teach myself Braille so I could read books in the car without getting dizzy. So I looked up the alphabet online, got my pencil, and just started drawing dots in my notebook. But I wanted to read Braille tactily. So I took my now dull pencil and pushed really hard in the pages of the notebook. So that way, when I flipped them over, I could read the Braille on the other side. About a week later, I wanted to test my skills. So I got a Braille book from the library, opened it up, and read two words, because the third word wasn't something that I understood. It wasn't a letter. So frantically searching online, I realized that Braille it is more than just an alphabet. It's a system of over 180 contractions and symbols for words in order to save space in a Braille book. So every word isn't written out letter for letter. Some words are a different dot combination for the symbols, and other words only use a few letters, like an abbreviation. And I thought, oh dear, this is going to take a long time. Is it really worth it just to read books in the car? I could just take motion sickness medicine, and that would solve my problem. So I didn't do much with Braille for a while. It wasn't until eighth grade where I read an article about how 3D printing could be used to make telescope and microscope images tactile, so that way people who are blind could make their own observations instead of having to rely solely on a description. They were even adding Braille labels to the models, so that way the people who are blind could explore on their own and discover what was in the diagram. They didn't have to ask someone. I thought this was so cool. I thought, I could make some of those 3D models, and then I'll add Braille labels to it and a Braille description. And that would be a good reason to start learning Braille again, because now I have something else to use Braille for besides just reading books in the car. So I started learning the contractions. I even signed up for a Braille class. And then I realized, oh, I don't have a 3D printer. I don't have a way to make models. So I just kept learning Braille by myself. It was kind of fun. But then when I went to high school, we had a whole bunch of 3D printers. But I noticed that a lot of times they weren't being used. Sometimes kids didn't know how to work them, they didn't know how to fix them, and those that did know how to work the printers weren't sure what to create. So they just started making random objects. We also had a rainbow assortment of filament colors just sitting around the lab, just being empty. Or maybe only half the filament rolls were filled up because someone would need a roll for an, a project, and then when the project was over, they didn't need that color anymore and they had to buy a new color, so we just had half-used filament rolls. I thought, well, what if we used those half-filled filament rolls to make objects for people who are blind because color isn't the most important characteristic when you're making a tactile model. And for all those people that want to learn about 3D printing, they can make objects for people who are blind. It gives them something to design. I thought, this is great. Let's go do it. And I thought, well, OK, I don't know how I'm going to do that because I don't know what objects people who are blind want because I don't know anyone who's blind. I just read Braille. So, I was, again, just kind of keeping that idea in my head, not doing much with it. But then I happened to go to a college open house, and I met a woman who worked there who was blind, and her name was Cassandra. I asked her, what would you want to see that I could 3D print for you? She said, I'd like to see a castle, because I've been to Disney World multiple times, but I'm not really sure what a castle looks like. So using some leftover yellow filament at school, printed out a Disney castle and gave it to Cassandra. And I asked her, well, how would you describe a castle? And she said, oh, I can now feel the turrets. I can feel the walkways and the doorways. I have a clearer and a more vivid image of what castle is now. Before I touched the model, castle was just a word. And I thought, oh, we need to make concepts more than just words. We need to get more models in the hands of people who are blind because it has the potential to give them that idea of what objects look like. I thought, well, people who are blind exist at what models? People that like 3D printing exist. What's missing is the connection. And I can make that connection, and I'll call it C3D, because it's like seen with 3D models. And we'll somehow connect everyone. Well, how do I do that? I'll just make a website. That's how things usually work. Well, I didn't know how to make a website, so I asked some of my friends who were into web programming, and they helped me out, and we made a website called C3D.org where people who are blind or parents or teachers of blind children can make requests for 3D printed models, and then we can connect them with those who know 3D printing and want to create those objects. And it was a great idea. I kept going along with it. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if 3D design classes 
incorporated making objects for people who are blind. So that way you're not just designing an object for your homework, you're designing an object that can be used. Someone would benefit from the object. You could see the impact in a week after creating it. Because tactile objects do currently exist for people who are blind that aren't 3D printed. They're great, they're accurate, they have braille labels, but sometimes they're so expensive or so large that a school only has one or a few copies that everyone has to share, and so students can't take them home to study with. My friend who was blind named Haley said that when she was learning about shapes in math class, she had rectangular prisms and spheres and used them at school, but she didn't get to take those home. Well, with 3D printing, you can print an entire shape kit in a few hours and give it to the child at the end of the day. They don't have to wait for the shapes to come in the mail. It's opportunities. You can make all these objects for the students. And people who love 3D printing can help. You don't have to maybe be an expert in making objects for the blind, but you can make something that's 3D printed and people who are blind could use it. What's also great about 3D printing is you can make an object in any size you want. Sometimes if an object's too large, it can be hard to understand the big picture because unlike people that could just see the object and understand what it is, people who are blind can only feel a small piece of it at a time. That's not until they feel the entire model and put all the pieces together that they can understand what it is. So you could print a smaller version of an object, understand what the general shape is, and then print a larger version to get all the detail. You could even print intermediate sizes for each student. Maybe some kids like medium-sized model or large models. You have that freedom with 3D printing because it doesn't have to be one size model fits all. You can accommodate for every student's needs. When I was learning about the United States and landforms, I used a large pull-down map at school. I could see the rivers, mountains, and cities. When I went home, I just printed up a picture from the internet and used that to study with. But kids are blind can't just print an object, a picture. You can't see a picture. Well, they could use a nice official model at school and then have a 3D printed model they could just print at home from the internet and study with that. It could be small enough that they could travel with the model. It, they could take it and keep it after they graduate. They don't have to return it when the class is over. And, but it's important that those models that they're printing off are accurate. Since people that love 3D printing sometimes make objects that are just for fun, for artistic purposes, it may not be something that could be used in the classroom. But if we can get more people to design objects, we can make more objects that are accurate and can be used in an educational setting to provide equal opportunities. You also don't have to be blind to benefit from a 3D model. When I was learning about DNA, I looked at a picture in my textbook, my teacher would describe DNA, but I didn't know what DNA looked like till I saw a model. When my friend Karen, who is blind and is currently a PhD student in cognitive neuroscience was learning about DNA, she heard that DNA was a double helix and was told to visualize a double helix. Well, she didn't know what to visualize because she didn't have any prior knowledge of a double helix. It wasn't until she touched the model that she had a better understanding. Karen and I both needed a model to understand DNA. And Karen felt that having the verbal description and the tactile model made science more accessible for her. It was more interesting. And she hoped that more kids are blind would have the opportunity to touch 3D models because it might spark their interest in science when it's accessible. When I talked with a lot of my friends who are blind, they said a lot of times they were just excluded from laboratory exercises. Teachers thought, oh, the dissection, you'll cut yourself. You'll spill chemicals on your hand. You'll burn yourself in the Bunsen burner. And they sometimes weren't even that interested in science anyway because it hadn't been accessible. But if students have the models and they get an interest in science, they can learn the alternative non-visual techniques to do laboratory procedures safely, and they can pursue these scientific careers. The door opens. It's so important to include people who are blind in discussions like science or any field because they can provide a unique perspective on the world because they view the world differently than people who are sighted. When I asked my friend Haley how she would describe the color orange, she said, orange is a cold color. I thought, huh? I thought orange was hot, like fire. She goes, well, Caroline, haven't you touched an orange from the fridge? It's pretty cold. Oh, I guess that makes sense. I never thought of orange that way. It's just 
I mainly interpreted the world through sight and saw fire that was orange, and she interpreted the world through touch and touched a cold orange. It doesn't matter how you interpret orange. There's no right or wrong answer. And since Haley and I had that conversation, we both gained a new perspective, a new idea on the world. There's so much we could learn if we used all of our senses. We could use more than just sight, just hearing. What if you use them all? Think of artwork. Usually, you just look at a painting, look at a sculpture, or you could hear a description of the artwork of what someone had seen. Well, what if you could smell the food that's in a painting, or hear the music of the people that are dancing, or touch the artifacts behind the glass case? What other things would you think of? Well, in an effort to make their art exhibit more accessible, the Art Institute of Chicago 3D printed a selection of their artifacts, so that way people who are blind could experience what was behind the glass. And what they found is it wasn't just the people who were blind that were more connected to the models. It was everyone, because everyone was invited to touch and interact with the artwork. They didn't just walk by the glass case. They had to interact with it. When the curator of Japanese art at the Art Institute, Dr. Katz, first felt the Jomon period dogu figurines, she said the figurines felt as they just feel right in the palm of your hand. And when I touched the 3D printed model of the figurines, I also noticed that there were crevices that fit my fingers. And I had that same experience as the curator, and I was more connected to the artwork. Making things accessible for people who are blind or any disability doesn't just benefit them and make it more accessible. It affects everyone because it invites people to experience something in a new way and think of a new idea. C3D helps connect people who are blind and sighted to hear the different perspectives. My favorite part is asking a recipient of a model how they would now describe that object. One man said that a snowflake looks like a fancy cookie. I thought, oh, I guess it kind of does. It has some cool designs to it. And I would have never thought of that if I didn't ask him. There's so much we could learn from people who experience the world differently. So that's why we need to have more 3D printing, have accessibility. And so what I challenge you is if you're interested in 3D printing, make an object for someone who's blind. C3D has already made more than 500 models and mailed them to people in the US and internationally. And every time, we're connecting and learning about how people are blind interpret the world. So ask someone who's blind how they would interpret a visual concept when they touch a model because they might see something that's been overlooked. Mm -hmm.